All right, we got another mini PC here, and this one is AOC branded. Wait a minute, what's under there? Ah, Ace Magic. So this is the new AOC AM16 powered by Ace Magic. Has it got viruses? It does have the mysterious virus file. It's got it on here. endev.exe is in the Windows folder where I don't want to see it. I did tons of virus scans and they all came back negative. I used malware bytes. I used Windows Defender. I did offline scans, tried all that. Everything came back negative. Scanning the actual files came back negative. So I went on to virus total, put it in there. And it came came back and said, oh, you got Trojans. Uh, how about that? And Bitdefender Theta should, should detect it. But get this, I did a test with Bitdefender Theta and it says everything's okay. So it didn't detect anything. So something's going on here. What is this Ian, Ian Dev file doing? Well, we'll talk about that in just a second, but I wanna test this thing out and see how it runs because you know it's, it's interesting to test some different hardware that's not the 7840HS that I've tested a million times to show you what something that's slightly lower cost might you know be like. So you know even if there's no viruses, that junk shouldn't be there. We'll talk about why it's there right after the break. But first off, let's get our copy of Windows activated from Hookies. I'm going to get the copy of Windows for this going from Hookies, and then we'll come back and talk about this. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not going to be relying on Microsoft, and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code. Click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25. Hit apply, and that price comes down. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices from Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home, Windows 11, you can buy it directly, Windows 11 Home, and we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on My Purchase Orders, just View, Keys, and Codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit Start, type Activate, click on Activation Settings, Paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. So here's the deal. That thing that they put on there, EN Dev, that's not as many things as they used to put on there. They used to put two or three different files in that folder, and they go into a folder inside your Windows folder called OS Ver. Now, what they told me is that that is there to allow you to bypass the Microsoft login credentials thing when you're first starting Windows 11. It bypasses all the online stuff as well, so you don't have to worry about waiting 30 minutes to do a Windows update. You can get into the browser, get into the operating system, and then do an update. If you go to Virus Total and you go to People Online, they're all saying that this thing has a Trojan and it looks for credentials in Chromium based browsers and other things on your computer. I don't use Chromium based browsers. I use them to download Firefox, but that's about it. So I don't know what it's doing there. And I don't know if the Trojan is there because I'm getting all negatives with all of my scans. And before you used to get positives, but even Bitdefender says nothing. Malwarebytes, nothing. So I don't think there's anything there, but still at the same time, Ace Magic, you should have learned your lesson. This, just stop, stop. Don't put this on the computer. Like, I know it sucks that people are gonna have to like use a Microsoft account and all that stuff. I know Microsoft is forcing people to do that and it's cool to fight back, but I've made a tutorial on how to bypass that online Microsoft account. And other YouTubers have made tutorials as well. There are people out there, if they want to avoid using an online account, they can do so. But most people are probably just going to plug it in, install it, and sign up and all that stuff, which is sad. But it is what it is. And these kinds of hacks are just going to raise lots and lots of red flags and make people mad at you. And you're going to get lots of negative press. And now AOC's name is involved. And AOC, if you care what you're doing, you better say something about it because now you've got to make a statement. But I don't know what's going on with this. I don't trust it. I'm wiping it completely clean. I'm deleting every partition. And I'm reinstalling Windows 11 Pro myself because I want to test it. I want to see how the 5700U performs. And that's what we're going to do. So first off, let's go through all the specs, talk about that, what we have here. And then I'm just going to test it based upon those specs so you can know if you see other little computers that have the 5700U with similar specs, you'll have an idea of how they perform. We do have 32 gigabytes of, so it's not DDR5, this is DDR4 memory, 512 gigabyte M.2. We'll test the speed on that in just a little bit. There is plenty of expandability, and I'll show you that when we take the back off. The integrated graphics is branded Radeon Vega. 512 megabytes of internal memory, but it'll also share some of that system memory, the DDR4, um, so you can play games on this. If you, I'm not, I'm not gonna test them because I don't play them and don't have a lot of these. It will play Fortnite, Dota, League, games like that with no 
problems whatsoever. It'll play more advanced games than that, and um, this is going to be a monster for emulation. We got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. So on the front, let's start on the left there. We've got a USB Type-C. Then we have USB 3.2 though we have two of those in the front. Then we have our audio. That's going to be your mic and your headphone combo port. We have a little R thing in the front right there. That's a reset button. All right, then on the sides, we have some vents just to keep the air flowing. Flipping it around to the back, we have USB 2. We have two HDMI and we have full-size LAN that's gigabit ethernet. So this tiny case actually has plenty of storage expandability options. Now you take off the feet, you just gotta peel them off. Then there's four screws and we open it up and there's a sled where you can install a 2.5 uh, inch hard drive. That can be an SSD or it can also be a 2.5 inch like small laptop sized spinning disc hard drive if you like. Then there's four more screws you can remove. You just remove the tape and take off the SATA power connector and the SATA connector, move that aside, and then we have access underneath that to an additional M.2 spot. That's 2280, that's the spot you can have there. So basically full size M.2. So you can expand the M.2 and add a two and a half inch hard drive. So that's a lot of expansion for something that's this small. All right, next up, let's play some games on this. So I'm not gonna do crazy testing. I'll do some, some testing here at the end. I wouldn't be playing like, I don't know, Cyberpunk or whatever on this, any brand new AAA games, but if you wanna play like indie games or a lot of games from a couple of years ago that are pretty much AAA quality, you can totally play those. Like this is Anno Mutationum, one of my favorite indie games in the last few years. Now it looks like pixel art, but it's actually 3D. And this ran well over 40 FPS on the highest setting the entire time at 1080p. And I think it looks awesome. So this works just fine. Now, while it might not be able to play like Baldur's Gate 3, you can play Divinity Original Sin 2, which also looks really good. And I started off on medium because I was like, let's see how that plays, but ended up turning it up to ultra. And on the ultra setting, we're still getting over 30 FPS basically the entire time. And that's in a, you know, a diff, you know, a couple different environments. I decided to go outside and run around and do some different things, places where there's lots of effects and waterfalls and everything. And it was running great. As far as emulation goes, I wasn't sure if it could emulate the Switch or not, but sure enough, I loaded up the last copy of Yuzu that was made available before it disappeared. I'm playing Mario Kart right here at the native resolution, and it's basically locked at 60 FPS. It feels buttery smooth. It feels great. So some Switch games emulate beautifully. You know, Tears of the Kingdom is okay. You know, it's not like amazing. I would not play Tears of the Kingdom on this machine, but you can play basically everything up into the Switch, but not quite Tears of the Kingdom. You can play some games on the Switch, but not all of them. But otherwise, if you want to play like Atari Jaguar, go ahead, have some fun. If you want to play old school Nintendo games, Super Nintendo games, Sega, whatever, you can play all these old emulators beautifully, and you can even turn like CRT filters all the way up to the max and still be able to play the games at completely beautiful frame rates. I mean, these are old games, but CRT filters, they are, you know, they do require a little bit. All your emulation needs, um, except for like brand new modern games, will be just fine on this. Superposition did better than I thought. I didn't expect this to do well at all because it really taxes the CPU and the GPU, but 19.48 FPS at 1080p medium is pretty good for this system. If you're playing at home, 2604 is the score. So we got 32.2 FPS with a score of 1346. This is Cinebench R23. I know there's a newer Cinebench, but this one's, I like it better. Anyway, so we got two different scores here. Let's start off with the single score. And you can see pretty fast. Let's see how much faster it is compared to the other stuff. So the 5700U is a good CPU. Now this is four or 500 under the 7840HS that I test all the time, but it's also a few hundred dollars less expensive. So for a lot of people, this is gonna be okay. Multi-core, how does it stack up? Still faster than the 7700K. Look at that. That is wild. <laughs> I love the CPU from back in the day. So compare that to the 7840HS, which is 15025. This is 8,122. So it is slower, but again, it's less expensive. Let's take a look at our Geekbench score here. The single core is 1621. The multi-core is 6,935. If you're playing along at home, you can test and see what your system is. Or if you're comparing to other systems, there you go. I'll scroll down through here. Stop on anything you want to see. All right, moving on over to the next thing. This is the OpenCL score for the graphics, 16308. And I'll scroll down so you can see the particulars. Right there they are. All right, let's take a look at the hard drive and just make sure everything looks like it's doing what it should be doing. Oh, it's this, this cheaps. Why do they always do this? And uh, yeah, I guess our sequentials are a little bit different here. But, but yeah, it looks better than 
expected. So right around 3.2 speed, PCI Express 3.2 speed that is. So the next thing I wanna do is try to roast this CPU. By the way, this system is super quiet. Maybe the quietest mini PC I've heard in a while. But let's see if it ramps up once we click on the fire. And then we're gonna hit start and I'll come back in 15 minutes and we'll see how hot this is getting. And we'll also do a noise test. So it's not loud. This is the loudest I've seen it so far, but get this. The fans do ramp up, but now they've gone down to like nothing. So let me take another reading real quick because it's we're in the middle of testing this still. So I'm gonna call these fans extremely pleasant and quiet. All right, it's been a while and CPU is not looking that bad, 79. So, uh, but yeah, it stays around there. Let's test out some video editing with Premiere 2024. So I've got some 4K footage in here. That's half. So let's crank this up to full on both sides there. And we'll make this a little bit bigger just so we can see the footage. Scrubs around pretty good. Move around, stop, play. Completely usable. This is faster than a lot of things I've used. All right, let's put a cross dissolve in there and just see how choppy it gets, which, you know, even with the decent system, it usually gets a little bit choppy. So give me that cross dissolve. There we go. Is it in there? Got that in there. All right, let's drag it out a little bit. There's nothing going on right there, just me unboxing, but cross dissolve. That's, that was really good. These AMDs do a really good job. One more time. Yeah, that's great for full resolution in the editor. Like I said, I normally do it half resolution just because, you know, I'm gonna do a long cross dissolve right there with half resolution. See how that looks. Okay. It's great. So let me zoom around the timeline a little bit, switch back up to full. What's going on here? Just footage that I have yet to edit. Yeah, it looks good. And uh, this is great. You could edit 4K footage on this all you like. Now, really, this is a shame because I think this is, in my opinion, like the best little thing that Ace Magic has made, mainly because it runs really well, it's a good price, and it's nice and quiet. Most of these mini PCs are not quiet like this one, so maybe that has something to do with 5700U. Anyway, I don't trust endev.exe as far as I could sling a piano. That's pretty much the end of the video, I guess. Let's see what's for sale on the store, shall we? Right over here, we still got this keyboard, half price. So you can get this. It's a very poppy membrane keyboard. Don't be afraid of these membrane keys. They feel really good. Picked them myself. And the reason I did is because they're quieter than mechanical and also less expensive and it's water resistant and you can change all the colors by holding function and pressing tab. So very easy to use. We got some t-shirts on sale. Just click on, click on sale up here. I don't know if I put the mouse on the sale list, but yeah. And you can see what we got on sale. These are on sale. Only have about a half a box of these left and that's it. Get your classic burning earth to signify exactly where we are right now. The fire is supposed to mean knowledge, but yeah, anyway. So yeah, head on over there. And last thing I'll mention is these are still on half price. 3360 sensor. You change the lights by holding down buttons. No software needed. It's a flawless mouse that feels really good. I don't need to market it because it's 20 bucks. So you know what to do. Head on over to epicpants.com. See you later. Mm -hmm.